Hi, beautiful. Thank you for clicking on this experience, which is a healing meditation for your inner child. Part one offers some foundation and will prepare you for the experience. Part two is the actual meditation I'll talk you through. And part three will conclude the experience. The phrase inner child brings different ideas to different minds. So let me share how I'm using that term. When I say inner child, I am referring to an internal aspect of you that experienced a great, unattended pain or loss in your childhood, or a series of great, unattended pains and losses in your childhood. You may or may not be consciously aware of the effects of these childhood hurts or abuses, but they have definitely influenced the now adult version of you. The intent of this meditative experience is to direct tender, caring awareness toward a particular memory that feels unresolved and ready for closure. Please note that I am not a licensed mental health professional and this meditation is not presented as a substitute for industrialized methods. I am sharing with you a free and creative way to consciously use your will, your imagination, and your breath to bring about relief and refreshment. I acknowledge the incredible difficulty of motherhood and if you are a mom, I honor every sacrifice and delayed desire that motherhood required of you. This meditation places zero blame or shame on the heroic efforts of loving moms. I give daily thanks for all that my mom endured as a single parent, and I send extra loads of respect to all single parents who face the most challenging job on earth without a partner. Double strength to your arms, single parents. The field of psychology has a lot to say about childhood wounds. Dr. Gabor Mate is my favorite voice on the subject. Inner child work is shadow work. Whether you envision a shadow or a child version of yourself, the point of working with the shadow and or inner child is to stop muzzling, hiding, denying, refusing them and start accepting and loving them. Whatever sliver or fragment of yourself that has not received your love is wreaking havoc somewhere, some way. The Gnostic Thomas put it this way. He said, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. That is the best description of shadow work and inner child work I've ever heard. Bring forth what is within you. And I'd add, and meet it with love. Ideal ways to experience this healing meditation. If you're able to, please listen with headphones and without disturbance. It's ideal to be in the quiet privacy of a room by yourself or even a parked vehicle if quiet is hard to come by. And best of all would be to lie down on a comfortable bed or sofa or undisturbed patch of grass or sand. The point is to create an environment around you that will support the work of revealing 
and healing. Beginnings. Beginnings are so important, whether the beginning of a relationship or a new job or business, and certainly the beginning of a life. A beginning is the first part of something. It is the brand new start of something. The most basic instinct within us makes it clear that beginnings in life are to be protected and kept free from harm and undue disadvantage. A person's beginning in life should start without the normalized interferences of neglect, abandonment, abuse, molestation, or other traumatic forms of lovelessness. But what should happen often does not happen and those unfair situations create wounds and injury. The quick, quick, quick pace of modern life rarely allows the time, space, or know-how to productively deal with these wounds and injuries. Most humans just do their best to keep journeying forward despite what may be hurting them deep within. So, now is a designated time for you to choose a persistent, painful memory and see how you can shrink and dissolve that pain with something you always have access to and in unlimited supply. That is loving attention. Are you ready to have an uncommonly beautiful encounter with yourself? Before we move on to part two, I remind you that you are in complete control of this experience. Follow the suggestions that feel good and right to you. And if at any point you sense overwhelm or unpleasantness, exercise your sovereignty, beloved, and simply pause or stop. You can always come back to this at another time. Part two, place your body in a comfortable position, sitting or lying down. Closing your eyes can strengthen your focus. So if you're comfortable doing so, please close your eyes. Now, inhale as slowly and deeply as you can until your lungs are so full you can't hold any more air. Hold for a moment. With your next inhale, realize that you will be inhaling unconditional love. Every time you inhale, you are receiving not only fresh oxygen, but also pure love. Now, exhale as slowly and completely as you can until your lungs are so empty, you have no more air to expel. Hold for a moment. With your next exhalation, Realize you will be exhaling pain, fear, and resentment. Every time you exhale, you are releasing not only carbon dioxide, but also disempowering emotions. Take a few moments to get used to this intentional way of breathing. Inhaling draws in love and exhaling releases pain, fear, and resentment. Every inhalation fills you more and more with a relaxed sense of well-being and love. And every exhalation creates more and more cleared space for peace, joy, and newness within you. Now, use your imagination to see 
your physical body as a library that holds the stored memories of your life. With your inner eye, slowly scan your body's library from head to toe. Notice the first location in your body that seems to stand out. This spot gives a sensation of some sort that seems to call for your attention. That physical signal is both an invitation and an indication that there is something more to explore there. Bring your tender and caring attention to this spot within your body. Here is one of your body's books or stored memories that now presents itself to you to be reviewed in the light of love. You are safe to review these pages or memories within the book. Anything you see is here to be set free. You can give your young, precious self a huge, enveloping hug if you like. Let your arms wrap around this former version of yourself. Assure her or him that you completely love and accept them. Acknowledge the hard things they endured in this memory while young and tender. What did they need but did not get? any feelings of sadness or grief about that to rise and release. Exhale and release the sadness and grief about that. This is the work. This is bringing forth what is within you. For the next few minutes, continue to enjoy the sweet company of your inner child. Now is a perfect time to comfort and console them. You are the only person in the whole world who knows exactly what would be helpful to hear. So, say those things now to your inner child. Part three, as we approach the end of this meditation, you can say to your inner child, bye for now, beloved. We are healthily connected and I will be listening for your messages. 
You are very important to me, dear one. I love you and commit to keep you safe. Congratulations. You have established a positive bond with your inner child. You can revive this connection as often as you like. You can return to this meditation and love your way through as many memories or body books as present themselves to you. And at any time, you can inhale love and exhale pain, fear, and resentment. These internal practices empower and support you. When you feel ready, open your eyes and bring your awareness from inside you to your physical surroundings. The things around you may look the same, but you are not the same. You bravely brought something forth from within. And that means you are now more whole and more free than before. I'm thrilled for you and your inner child. Walk in your newness. If, after experiencing this, you desire a caring conversation, there's a link for you beneath this video.